Okay, this is MMA. <laughs> this is not a medieval battle. But no, all you do is copy Game of Thrones that was already shitty to start from. This same nonsense. Everything is gray and boring. Okay, no. These arrows don't have the penetration power to push a knight off his horse. Napoleonic cavalry put on a helmet and breastplate and this is your medieval knight. Welcome to History Legends, and in this video we'll do a step-by-step -step analysis of the Battle of Agincourt depicted in the movie The King. But before we start, let's get some context. The Battle of Agincourt took place in October 1415 between the English and the French army during the Hundred Years' War. Let's take a look at how the king depicts medieval warfare. But before we start, don't forget to like and subscribe. So from the first second right away, this doesn't look like France. I don't know where they filmed this, but this is not France. And the field should be cultivated land. And a hill? I don't think so. Their armor looks pretty pathetic. The knights, none of them have shields. Just like in Game of Thrones, no tactics are used. Send in your knights forward and your archers will just shoot at everyone involved in the melee. No! The actual deployment at Agincourt was quite different. And keep in mind, there were about 5,000 archers. The English archers were deployed on a long line. And in between those archers, you had 2,000 English knights. However, right off the bat, we can't feel the real magnitude of the battle. But that's not all. The archers were also protected by their famous wooden stakes that they planted in front of their line to protect them from cavalry charges. And lastly, the troops hidden in the forest were actually archers as well. And they were on both flanks of this field, not men at arms like depicted in this scene. And King Henry was actually in the middle of his army, right along the line of archers surrounded by his bodyguards. And where the hell is the hill coming from? Honestly, let's take a look at the battlefield today. It barely changed in 600 years. It's amazing. So if you look on the map, you notice this funnel-like field and these two woods on both flanks. The English army positioned itself at the end of this field, right here, while the French army was positioned at the other end. Now, if we zoom in, we notice that the battlefield is flat. I don't see any hill, but I do see lots of open space and fallow fields, lands that farmers plow but that are not cultivated. As you can see, the English army was not protected on its rear by a forest, and actually, we should have seen a baggage train somewhere close to the archers in the movie. So the entire field should be muddy. It rained just before and the weather was cold. This armor doesn't look medieval and his army neither. He's a king, goddammit. Doesn't even look like a king. Now, none of these knights have lances. And the horses, no color, everything is gray and boring. Let's talk about the French mounted knights, the knights on horseback. There are three things we can notice. Number one, they all have swords. In reality, they would have had lances, massive lances. Number two, None of them have shields. And number three, they all look gray and boring. There's nothing medieval about this cavalry. None of them have colors, their coat of arms. Medieval knights were actually the elite of the society at the time. We should see more 
banners representing every clan, every lord, then colors for each clan, coat of arms, horses should have the same colors as the clan itself. And this cavalry would advance forward with pride. But I feel what they did here is that they took Napoleonic cavalry, put on a helmet and breastplate, and this is your medieval knight. You gotta understand that mounted knights were like medieval tanks. It was literal horsepower to punch into the enemy line and cause it to break. So now picture this. You have an armored knight on a horse. Now his left is protected by his shield. His center is protected by the horse itself. And his right is protected by the lance. There's actually very little from this knight that is exposed to enemy threat. Now imagine a formation of such knights charging into a tightly packed enemy formation. It will cause massive damage unless they never reach the enemy. Finally, something that makes sense. Okay, no wooden stakes in front of their line. Oh my god, why are they aiming up? They literally turned their entire life to aim at targets. Okay, no. These arrows don't have the penetration power to push a knight off his horse. Let's break this myth once and for all. Archers could not penetrate plate armor. The arrows would simply bounce off. Otherwise, why would knights even bother wearing expensive and heavy armor if it didn't protect them? The second myth is that archers did not shoot up in volleys, but rather individually and straight at the enemy. It does look cool on camera, but it is not realistic. Volleys were used 200 years later because muskets were so inaccurate you had to pack soldiers together to expect hit anything in front. But with archers, that wasn't necessary. English archers were like modern day snipers. So all they did since a young age was train to be an archer all day long for years. We can compare this to modern day Olympic athletes that start at a young age and trained for years to achieve that high level. Archers, English archers were the same. And you can bet they could place their arrow wherever they wanted. However, there was this sense of urgency because you had mounted knights charging at great speed towards you. They specifically aimed at the weakest spot of the mounted knights, the unprotected horses. Once the horse was hit multiple times, it would act hectic and drop the knight on the ground. Their tactic was like a stopping barrage that stopped the first wave of cavalrymen that would fall to the ground and they would be stomped by the following waves of knights that would trample on top of the first wave. It must have been chaotic with the continuous flow of arrows falling upon the French knights. What actually happened at Agincourt was a bit different. King Henry knew that he was inferior in number, but he wanted to use his archers at a full potential. He then ordered the archers to move forward in open field to bait the French knights to attack them. By the time the French knights mounted their horses and ready to charge, the archers had already planted their wooden stakes in front of them and were ready. The French cavalry charge was met with a barrage of arrows as well as a muddy ground unsuitable for horses. They quickly pulled back and cancelled the charge. Like through, like butter. It's a massacre. What do you guys expect? I don't understand. They have this face of surprise. Of course, they send in their infantry facing these knights, mounted knights. It's gonna be a train wreck. 
And this is exactly why the English didn't do that during the actual battle. Okay, a second ago the, the infantry got massacred and now all of a sudden magically they stopped the charge. Their flanks are not even covered, but at least there's mud now. I don't know where it comes from, but there's mud. But look, the battle is so dull, everything is gray. You don't even know who's who. People knew who, who was who because they had different colors. But it shows how deadly a medieval battle would have looked like. Oh yeah, very smart. To remove your helmet when it just saved your life seconds ago. But uh, this is not a medieval battle. Helmets are not medieval. Armor, meh. This looks more like a, a rave than the Battle of Agincourt after the French cavalry charge had failed. It's thousands of knights on foot that attacked the English archers. However, they had to walk through one kilometer of complete mud while the English archers rained thousands of arrows on them. So picture this, you have thousands of knights walking in mud. It's already hard to walk in mud in civilian clothing. So imagine with this heavy armor, it takes a lot of energy. And then because of all the arrows coming towards you, you use your shield to protect you. But then after a while, you have so many arrows stuck in your shield that it becomes too heavy and you simply drop it to the ground, but rendering you even more vulnerable. But like we mentioned before, arrows could not pierce armor, but arrows could find their way in weak spots, either at places that was only protected by chain mail or at the juncture of armored pieces. And it is estimated that the English archers released 83,000 arrows on the French army that day. On average, that's 40 arrows per archer. But surprisingly, despite their heavy armor, the arrows and the mud, the French knights actually reached the archers and forced them to withdraw. But at that point in time, after making their way through all the horses and knights killed from the previous attack, the French knights were completely exhausted, wounded, and above all, dispersed. And this is when the fresh and battle-ready English knights charged in and the melee started there. But to give you an idea how a melee in the Middle Age would have looked like, take a look at this reenactment. There are two masses of men that are simply pushing each other until one side breaks. You can't even use your weapon, so your shield is all you got. However, at Azincourt, the French knights were dispersed and could not use their superior number to their advantage. They got hacked down 1v5 by swarming ready to fight English knights and they got hacked down one after the other. So it's a big mess. Like the battle in Game of Thrones, it doesn't make sense. None of them have helmets. And now there's more French cavalry. Go around and charge the helpless archers. A few banners, at least. These archers are useless. Can't even aim at anything. The archers are alone. Charge them! Oh my god, they're going straight in! So they're charging, no helmet, no shields. What are you doing, little man? You're gonna get your little shoes all dirty. They don't even know who's English and who's French. Oh yeah, good luck taking off a mounted knight off his horse bare hand. Good luck. Okay, this is MMA. <laughs> this is not a medieval battle. This is uh, for the MMA audience. 
and he's out. <laughs> okay, choke, three taps on the ground, and he's out. If all you're going to do is punch each other or choke hold your enemies, why do you even need weapons? If you can use your bare hands in battle, this is so ridiculous. My theory is that the movie director read about the Battle of Asian Court on his way to the airport in the taxi. So he read everything that happened, was watching an MMA fight at the same time, and he mashed up everything. And where is the French army? The thing that makes the Battle of Asian Court epic is the French army was massive for the time period. But let's get this straight. The French prince never fought against the English king, nor did this entire fantasy of a duel instead of a battle. This is so ridiculous. And the worst thing is that the French prince didn't even die in battle. Of course, I understand they based the movie on Shakespeare's play instead of actual events, and the play was meant to romanticize the battle for an English audience. But still, the battle is barely talked about in the play. This is the moment you can show the actual brutality of medieval warfare. But no, all you do is copy Game of Thrones that was already shitty to start from. All you do is copy the Battle of the Bastards and you just redo it with an MMA twist. So ridiculous. It's literally the same battle, the same nonsense. This is what I noticed a lot about movies is that instead of taking the material from actual history, they take the material from other movie directors that did it before them. So they don't research stuff. They only copy what the other guy did. But the other guy did, didn't know better, right? So there's this chain of ignorance and ludicrous battle scenes. And of course, they didn't show the nasty thing that happened after the Battle of Agincourt. As you know, knights are very hard to kill. So a lot of them were on the ground and surrendered. Knights in armor were the wealthy ones. So instead of dying in battle, they would surrender and then be given back after a ransom paid by their family. But Henry V ordered all the prisoners to be executed. And this is not shown. It is estimated that 2,000 French knights were executed out of the 6,000 reported killed in the battle. And I know it's just a movie, but it's as if it's made on purpose to be historically inaccurate. You know, it's as if this director made a movie about World War II, but it got all the events mixed up. So in his version, the Soviets are actually defending Berlin against waves of SS paratroopers falling from the sky. And then, to make it cooler, you have a Tiger tank being airdropped next to the Reichstag. And the battle for Berlin ends with a duel at gunpoint in the Reichstag between Hitler and Stalin. <laughs> Can you imagine the outrage? Let me know in the comment section what you think of my analysis, what you thought about this movie scene. And don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.